Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to dive into this awesome rescue toolkit called NHV Boot. It's like having a superhero for your computer when you're in a tough spot. This toolkit is designed to come to your rescue in emergency cases where you need to save your Windows operating system, recover lost data, and fix those common problems that can really throw a wrench in your day. Now, let me tell you, NHV Boot is one of the newest and coolest computer rescue toolkits out there. It's got a sleek and modern design, and what's really neat is how incredibly compact it is. It's lightning fast and packs a punch. And the best part is, NHV Boot works like a charm with both old computers running on legacy BIOS and the new ones on UEFI. So whether you've got that trusty old machine or Intel 11th generation chip, NHV Boot has your back. Plus, it's not picky about operating systems either. It plays nice with Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So buckle up and get ready to explore the amazing capabilities of NHV Boot. It's time to be your own computer hero and tackle those emergency situations with ease. To get started, we need to head over to the nhvboot.com slash download website. Now, when you're on that website, you'll notice that NHV Boot offers different versions of the toolkit, each tailored to meet specific requirements. First up, they have the standard version. This one is perfect for home users with basic rescue capabilities, but it doesn't offer customization or technical support, and it is free. Next we have the extreme version. This is designed for technicians and advanced users who need those extra powerful rescue features. It supports a wide range of hardware and even comes bundled with one year of free technical support and upgrades. The extreme version does cost 6.4 US dollars per year, and they have the unlimited version for business use. If you're running a business and need top-notch rescue capabilities, this one is for you. It includes all the features of the extreme version, unlimited updates, and it's available for a lifetime license at 19.2 US dollars. For the test, we'll start by downloading the standard version of NHV Boot. Simply click on the download button and you'll be on your way. The download time is pretty quick since the ISO file is only 2.5 gigabytes, which is relatively small. Next, we'll need to grab Rufus 4.1p from the Rufus website. This is a portable version, so there's no need to install it on your Windows system. The file size is only 1.3 megabyte. Once you have Rufus downloaded, go ahead and run the exe file. Now, if you're looking to create a bootable external hard drive, select the list USB hard drive option and choose your external USB hard drive from the device selection. However, for this particular test, I won't be selecting that option. Please be careful, as selecting the wrong ones could result in the loss of both the Windows operating system and your data on your hard drive. Now, grab your empty USB drive. I'm using Kingston 32GB drive. The USB drive will be formatted during this process and any data on it will be lost forever. Once you're ready, head to the section below and click on select. Choose the ISO file you downloaded earlier. Next up, you'll have the option to select the partition scheme as either GPT or MBR. GPT is used if your target computer is based on UEFI, which is the newer version of the legacy BIOS system. In my test, I'll be selecting MBR so that I can use it on both systems. You can also customize the volume label. Once you've made all your selections, it's time to click on Start and begin the process. A warning will pop up letting you know that all data on the USB drive will be destroyed. Since I don't have any data on my USB, I will click OK. Once Rufus completes the process, you can close the program and plug in your bootable USB into the computer that you want to rescue. On my computer, I'll press the delete button several times when turning it on to access the BIOS or UEFI setting. On your computer, you might need to refer to the manufacturer on how to access the BIOS. Once you're in the boot menu, select the bootable USB to boot. Once the system boots up, you'll see a beautiful desktop with a variety of icons on the left side, such as AOMA Partition Assistant, Mini Tool Partition Wizard, 
Acronis True Image, Art Drive Image, and many more. First, let's check the Windows version. It's 21H2, OS build 2200. We're on the Windows 11 PE, version 21H2. You'll find the company trademark and copyright statement. You can open system properties. Windows 11 PE, 64 bit. You'll see the information about my computer, including the available free RAM. We have 14.6 GB of free RAM. NHV boot can run on machines with as little as 2 GB of RAM. Let's dive into the start menu and explore the WinPE settings. You can customize various settings such as the display size, show or hide hidden files, extensions for known file types, and protected operating system files. In the taskbar settings, you can toggle different features on or off. This WinPE in the Quick Access section provides shortcuts to computer management, disk management, and device manager. On the bottom right corner, you'll notice a UEFI indicator. By clicking the little icon in the application menu, you can access six groups of applications. There's also another little icon displaying contact information. Let's take a closer look at the drives. At the top, you'll see my Windows system drive, a hidden system reserve partition, and a hidden recovery partition. Below that, you'll find the bootable USB and two virtual drives. Under the NHV folder, you'll find two versions of WinPE that the USB thumb drive can boot into. One virtual disk is RAM disk, and the other virtual disk contains the WinPE operating systems. Now, let's explore how to access the internet within this WinPE. You have two options, using a network cable to connect the onboard network adapter to the router, or plugging in a USB Wi-Fi adapter. In this case, I'm using a Netgear dual-band Wi-Fi adapter. I'll update the driver for my Wi-Fi adapter by browsing my computer for the drivers. By default, it searches for the driver in this location. After successfully updating the driver, I can connect to my Wi-Fi network by entering the Wi-Fi password. In this section, we'll focus on the recovery of disk 1, which is an MBR disk with all three partitions deleted. I'll demonstrate an example of a common mistake where someone accidentally deletes all existing partitions during a custom Windows installation and wants to undo it. Remember, it's very important not to write any data to the disk to avoid complicating the recovery process. Instead, let's use the NHV boot rescue disk to recover the lost partitions. Here's how to do it. Step 1. Plug in the NHV boot rescue disk and restart your computer. On my computer, I press the delete button on my keyboard multiple times to access the BIOS. Once in the BIOS, select the rescue disk as the boot device. Step 2. From the NHV boot menu, choose Minitool Partition Wizard and run Partition Recovery. Select the Quick Scan option. Minitool will scan for partitions and detect three previously deleted partitions. You can explore each partition to see its contents. For example, in the system reserve partition, you'll find the boot manager responsible for locating the BCD file 
under the boot folder. The BCD file is very important for booting the Windows operating system. If it becomes corrupted, the system won't be able to locate the correct Windows operating system on the right partition. The second partition contains the Windows operating system, including program folders. The recovery partition stores the Windows recovery environment, which is needed for running startup repair. Select all three partitions, preview the changes, and click finished. Then, Click Apply to initiate the recovery process. As you can see on the screen, all three partitions on disk 1 will be recovered. Step 3. Return to the BIOS and change the boot device to disk 1. However, a common issue is that the disk may boot loop into the BIOS. If you encounter this problem, you can try using the Windows Installation Media and go to Advanced Options, then run Startup Repair. Keep in mind that you may receive an error message stating Automatic Repair could not repair your PC. In the case of an MBR disk, a simple solution is to go back to the Mini Tool Partition Wizard, select the System Reserve Partition, and set it as active. That's it! By following these steps, you should be able to recover the deleted partitions on your Windows operating system disk using this rescue toolkit. After completing the previous three steps, you can now successfully boot into Windows. Once you're logged in, it's important to verify that the system reserve partition is set as the active partition rather than the C drive. You have the option to hide the recovery partition by removing its assigned drive letter. As you can see on the screen, I am currently checking the integrity of my video files. It's always a good practice to verify the condition of important files after a recovery process. In this case, all of the video files appear to be in good condition, indicating a successful recovery. Let's continue exploring the NHV boot and the various programs that can assist in recovering lost partitions. In addition to Mini Tool Partition Wizard, there are a few more options available for partition recovery. AOMA Partition Assistant offers a partition recovery feature which can be accessed here. East US Partition Master also includes a partition recovery tool located in this section. Disk Genius has a convenient partition recovery button located at the top of its interface. Now, let's take a look at the Macrium Reflect. Although it does not have a dedicated partition recovery option, it does offer a solution for fixing Windows boot problems. This feature examines the Windows installation on the disk and prompts you to select the partition from which your PC should boot. While it's unclear whether the program can change the partition to active or if we need to do it beforehand, this menu provides several addition functionalities. These include resetting the disk ID, replacing the master boot record, replacing partition sector boot code, or rebuilding the BCD or the boot configuration data. You can address these issues individually based on the specific problem you encounter during the boot process. In most cases, it is advisable to consult the Microsoft Troubleshooting Guide for resolving Windows boot problems. Microsoft provides different troubleshooting procedures for both BIOS and UEFI systems. Now, let's delve into the R drive image and explore its features. The program offers a user-friendly menu with several options to choose from. One notable feature is the Partition Manager, which allows you to modify, format, 
or delete partitions. This can be a useful tool for managing your disk partitions effectively. Another option within the art drive image is the copy disk feature. Here, you can select the source disk and the destination disk to create a copy. This can come in handy when you want to clone a disk or transfer data to a new drive. Furthermore, our drive image provides the capability to create a startup USB directly from its menu. This is convenient for creating a bootable USB drive that can be used to boot your computer in case of system issues or for performing disk related tasks. One of the strengths of the R drive image is its ability to create backup and recovery images of your hard disk. These images can be stored on a separate hard drive. In the event of data loss or system failure, you can restore your system to a previous state using the backup image. Acronis True Image is known for its comprehensive backup and recovery capabilities. It offers features such as disk imaging, file backup, cloud backup, and disk cloning. It's important to be aware that you may encounter booting issues on both MBR and GBT disk, especially after disk cloning partition modification. However, on an MBR disk, a simple fix is to set the system reserve partition as active using the partition management tools mentioned earlier. So through this video, I hope I have provided you with an overview of the tools available in this NHV boot toolkit. And this concludes our first test on recovering lost partitions from an MBR disk and an overview of the NHV boot, the computer rescue toolkits. If you found this video helpful, please support us by subscribing to our channel and also see our next videos. Thank you for watching.